Okay, now let's move on to our next task, which is we need to determine MPLS label used along the path from R6 loop back 10 to get to R7 loop back 10. Okay, so now we know how to look up all these tables. Let's kind of go through and see how the actual or what actual labels are used in this scenario from R6 to get to R7. So let me bring up a diagram that we can write on. So we're trying to get from R6 loop back 10 along the path to R7 loop back 10. And we're going to try to figure out what levels are involved in this MPLS network right here. So we're going to be starting off at R1. So here on R1, we can do show IPCEF. I don't think I've shown you the show IPCEF and see what it looks like with MPLS. So R7 loop back 10 is 7701. That's our destination. And if you do show IPCEF of that, you can see that the next top is R3, and fast 00, 0 is the output interface, and the label 19 is going to be imposed on the packet. Okay, so as soon as the packet hits R1, and this is just the regular IP packet, as it leaves the interface fast 00, 0, it will be imposed with a MPLS label, let me kind of smaller, of 19. Maybe that's a little too small. Let's see. Okay, that's better. All right, so now the packets will come across to R3. So now we have to hop over to R3 and we can do show MPLS forwarding. And our destination again is 7701, just to look up how the label gets swapped. So you can see the incoming packet will be 19 as we expected it. And the outgoing label, is actually gonna be able to load balance between two different paths. And this is because we have an equal cost path from R4 and R5 to get to R7. And that's why we have two potential outgoing label. One is leaving interface 000 and one's leaving interface 010. Okay, so at this point, the packet could pick either one of the path. And I believe 000 is 31 label. So here is 31 and here is actually 32. Okay, so at this point, the MPLS label gets swapped from 19 to either 31 or 32. That's first goes to R4, so that would be 31. Again, do the same command, show MPLS forwarding 7701. So we expect to see a local label of 31 right here. And then the outgoing is 19. Okay, so right here will be 19. And if it happens to pick R5, let's see what it looks like. So R5 is expecting an, an incoming label of 32. So show NPLS forwarding 7701. And here we have level 32. And the outgoing label is also 19 here. Okay. And you might notice that the R2 is actually advertised the same label 19 to both R4 and R5. And this is by because by default the routers is running what they call a platform, a per platform mode, which means that the router will use the same label for the FEC regardless of its interface. There's actually another mode known as a per interface mode, which means the router will assign a different label to a different interface for the same FEC, but by default, the Cisco router runs on the per platform mode. Okay, now we finally, the packets will get to R2, and Regardless of whether it's coming from R4 and R5, they will have an incoming label of 19. So we can just show MPLS forwarding. And we can actually, instead of looking up by the destination prefix, we can just look up based on the label. So we can do label 19 and see what it looks like. So right here, label 19 being a local label and the outgoing is no label since it's just the last router in the label switching path. So the outgoing interface is not MPLS enabled. That's why it said it has to strip off all of its MPS labels from the packet header. So right here, the packet becomes an IP packet one more time before it reach R7. Okay, so this is exactly how the MPLS packet switching works. Once the routers in the MPLS network builds a label switching path with all the labels exchanged and assigned to the prefix or FEC, all the ingress router needs to do is to impose the correct labels and from then on the packet will get label switched along the path to its final destination without the intermediate router actually even look up the IP header. Okay so in this case our label switching path is either this way or this way. And finally just to prove that all these are working we can 
hop over to R6 and do a ping to R7 loop back 10. So here's our router R6. We can ping 7701 sourcing from loop back 10. You can see that it is pingable. Okay, what we can also do here is do a trace route from R1 to R7. And since R1 is participating in the MPLS network, just want to show you. And we can just source to, doesn't matter, we can do a loopback zero because it's advertised. And you can see that in addition to a regular trace route IP, it also has a MPS label that was involved. So in this case, it went from 3527. So the label was 1932.19. So right here, 1932.19. And then it gets to R7. Okay, now let's move on to our next task. Let me close that out. And this is our last task, which is we need to run a Wireshark on R1 fast 0, 0 and then capture an LDP packet for our review. Okay, so we're going to capture the packet right here on R1 fast 0, 0. So let's jump over to our switch and configure our span session. We have a PC connected to port fast 0, 023. So what we need to do is monitor session. Let's pick a number one, source interface fast 0, 1, which is where the R1 is connected to, and you show a uh, show CDP neighbor right here. R1 is connected to FAST01, and that's R1 FAST00. And then we need to do monitor session one, destination interface. We have a, a Wireshark machine, which is the computer that I'm currently on right now, connected to a FAST023. Okay, so let me bring up Wireshark and then start a new session. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to clear the LDP session between R1 and R3, and that way we force the whole session to be built from scratch, and we can look at the packets. So we can do clear IP MPLS, uh, it's actually clear MPLS LDP neighbor all. Okay, so let's stop right here, and let's see if we can filter based on, actually we might not need to. So you can see right here, hello packets, and then we, clear the neighbor so we saw the fin packet so we know that the end of our previous session is right here and then we again see a hello message to so start off with our LDP hello and you can see the source for this particular packet is coming from 13.1 which is R1 fast 00, 0 interface since the hello message is per interface and the destination is the well-known unicast of 224.0.0.2 which is all router on that layer 2 VLAN Right, and its type is a UDP packet with a source port of 646 and the destination is 646. And if you look deep into the content of the packet, it's version 1, and it's, it's announced itself with the ID of 172.16.01, which is what we configured. And here, the label space ID, 0 mean it's a per platform, or actually it's called platform wide, and that's what I mentioned earlier about router using the exact same labels for an FCC regardless of the interface because it's a by default a platform Y and that's identified as ID zero right here. And as part of the hello message, we have a message type hello. It gives you a length. Let's see what else that we have here. Common hello parameter. We got a hold time of 15 seconds and that's the default and you can definitely adjust that if you want. And we also have some, let's see, IPv4, uh, TLV, transport address, which is this by default where the router tells its neighbor what IP address it will use to build the TCP session, which you will see in a little bit here. So right here, it's announced itself with the transport address of 1621601. And again, this IP can be changed, which we'll look at in the future video, but by default, it used the router ID. Okay, so this is the hello message from R1. R1 is also see a low message from R3. The content is pretty much the same. You can see the transport address for R3 is loopback or router ID 0 0.3. Once they do 16, 0 0.3. And once the two learns each other, in this case, R3 is the one that initiate a TCP connection to R1 with the TCP SYN packet. And we have a SYN act coming back from R1 with the act back from R3. And then we have the initialization message. And let's take a look what's inside initialization message. Now the protocol has changed to a TCP with the source, which is the random port, and then the destination is the LDP port 646. Again, version one, 
router ID is still there. This is from R3. Label space the same. Let's go through initialization message. You see message type is now changed to initialization. First we have a common session TLV and inside that it has a parameter. And this is just additional information regarding the operation of the protocol. As you can see there's a downstream unsolicited being proposed. And again, this is the just a detail of how the protocol operates. We also have a session keep alive here. So there's nothing else actually to see under the initialization message. Let's, let's move down and see if I can find packet that we use to exchange the labels right here with the address mapping label mapping message. So this one is actually more interesting. It contains the what's actually going on with the label exchange. So let's see if I can kind of collapse all this just to make it easier. Okay, so right here, this is a message type address message and you can see following that is a whole bunch of label mapping message and this is the packets that actually carry the label exchange. So let's drill into one of these right now. So here, this is for this particular label mapping is for a forward forwarding equivalence class or FEC. And we just have to look deep into right here as so the prefix is 3300. And R3 is advertising that with the label of three, which I believe is a implicit now reserved label. Okay, let's see if we can find another one with the actual label. Okay, so right here, generic label 34. So if we go back to R3 and trying to look up label 34 with show MPLS forwarding label 34. Right here, it says it belongs to a prefix of 1621616. So that's what we expect to see inside the packet right here, FEC element, right there. Prefix 1621616 as we expected it. Okay, so this is pretty much what's going on behind the scene when a LDP session is built between two routers. It starts off with hello message, and then once it discovers each other's transport IP, then it starts building a TCP session, and then you will see the label exchange as part of that TCP session. So what we've gone through in this video is pretty much a fundamental of the MPLS with the label distribution protocols. And we have also seen how the labels are exchanged and the label switching in MPLS actually works. So you probably want to make sure that you have a good understanding of this before moving on to a more advanced topic of MPLS. And that wraps up our video on MPLS basic LDP. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmits.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.